Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can be notified of more content. In our last video, we discussed thermodynamic laws. Today, we will be explaining Gibbs free energy. First, let's start with our question of the day. What is an example of an exergonic reaction? If you don't know what an exergonic reaction is, don't worry, keep watching to find out. Here we have Gibbs' law of free energy. Before we get into what exactly the law means, let's define some of the terms. This delta G is the amount of free energy or available energy that can be used to do work. This value is dependent on three things, enthalpy, temperature, and entropy. Enthalpy is represented by this delta H and is equal to the change in the potential energy of a system. Let's take an example of a spontaneous reaction where a ball is rolling down a slide. At the top of the slide, the ball has potential energy. Once the ball is at the end of the slide, the amount of potential energy decreases and the total amount of enthalpy, represented by H, is decreasing. So, in a spontaneous reaction, the amount of enthalpy decreases. Another factor that affects the amount of free energy is entropy. Entropy is the amount of disorder. Let's take another spontaneous reaction, like dissolving salt in water. When salt is dissolved, it begins as fixed crystals, but then separates into ions, which increases disorder. Think about a kid playing with a tub of toys. At the beginning, all the toys are in this box, but as the kids start playing with the toys, they all end up across the room, which increases disorder. This is similar to the salt ions that are all across the water. The last factor is temperature. A spontaneous reaction would be when the temperature is increasing. Let's look at wood. Wood on its own is not going to start burning, but if you increase the temperature, then it becomes more likely that the wood would catch on fire. So all these things can affect spontaneous reactions. Looking at the equation, let's summarize our spontaneous reaction examples. For the first example, the ball rolled down the slide, so delta H decreased, and so did Gibbs free energy. In the second example, the salt was dissolved in water, so the entropy increased, causing Gibbs free energy to decrease. And for the third example, the temperature increased, causing Gibbs free energy to decrease. Therefore, whenever Gibbs free energy is below zero, it is a spontaneous reaction and is exergonic. When it is above zero, the reaction is not spontaneous and is endergonic. When Gibbs free energy is zero, then the reaction is at equilibrium. We can now take a look at the exergonic reaction in a free energy diagram. As you can recall, the exergonic reaction is spontaneous and increases entropy or disorder. In an exergonic reaction, energy is being released into the environment. So let's take a look at an exergonic reaction. For example, the ball rolling down the slide. So we start off with a certain amount of potential energy here, and then we push the ball, which is the activation energy, and we end up with less potential energy at the end. The opposite is true for an endergonic reaction. So imagine a ball being pushed up the slide. We start with the low potential energy at the beginning, we then add energy to the system by pushing it up the slide, and then at the top of the slide, it has more potential energy than at the beginning. Thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned for our next video on the cell cycle, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If this video made sense to you, let us know and leave your questions in the comments so we can answer them. As always, thank you for watching Think Science.